G'day, Starlo here. You know, of all the topics that I post about on social media, the ones that I get the most feedback and follow-up questions on are about catching bread and butter species like brim and flathead on fly gear, especially brim. Lots of people, just like me, love their brim. And the idea of being able to catch them on trout weight fly gear is pretty exciting. Now, I struggled with it for years, but over the last decade, I've found a few answers. And this afternoon, I wanna share with you some of the techniques that work for me when I'm chasing brim on fly. I'm heading out onto a coastal lake in southern New South Wales. It's currently closed to the sea, but recent rains raised its level and flooded the margins, so I'm hoping there might be some brim along the edges. The most frequent question I get asked is, what flies should I use? If you look in my brim fly box, you'll find various shrimp, prawn and bait fish patterns on size 6 to 2 hooks, mostly in natural colours and with some weight built into them. I do tie a few myself, but most of these are made by other people, and I've increasingly come to rely on patterns like this raw shrimp from Aussie tyre Brett Clark of BWC Flies. I'm kicking off up in some one to one and a half metre deep flats, looking for obvious structure like weed beds or snags. I've used the bow-mounted electric motor to sneak in here, and I'm slowly manoeuvring with it. You know when you've made a likely cast, such as this one, that lands my fly close to a drowned fence line. But they don't always stick. Oh, the hook again! Some days they're like that, just nipping tentatively at the fly. There's nothing for it but to get back in there and keep trying. The other common question I'm asked is about effective retrieves. There's no hard and fast answer, but I like to mix it up a fair bit. Long and short strips, fast and slow, but always with plenty of deliberate pauses built in. Those pauses are the key, I reckon, and they're often when the hit comes. Fish the fly all the way back, or at least to a point where you're ready to lift off and make another cast. Hits can come at any stage, so stay alert and watch your line for the slightest tremor or twitch. Also, regularly check your fly to make sure it looks right and it's swimming properly. If it's not, strip it right in and straighten it out. Brim rarely hit a fly that's got its legs or other material tangled around the hook bend or any weed on it. This is critical. Don't expect immediate action. Some days you really need to put the time in, but if you're doing it right, Success will eventually come. Oh, got him. Yep. Oh. Don't stress about trying to get the fish back onto the reel. Just strip line, stay tight, keep a bend in the rod, and let line slip under pressure when the hooked fish goes really hard. Brim are surprisingly powerful little fighters. Oh, good fish too. Ooh. the hook. That's a good fish. You won't win every battle. Oh. Popped him off. He was around the fence post when he took it. Cut it like that. Ooh. All right, pulled out a one, busted one off. Got another BWC shrimp on. Let's see if I can stay connected. It's a good idea to hang back as far from the structure as you can and make reasonably long casts. And don't forget to let the fly sink into the strike zone before commencing your retrieve. Treat every cast you make like it's going to produce a hit and stay focused on the task at hand. Just be aware that on some days there'll be lots of casts between brim. That's fishing.
But if one particular spot is obviously shut down, consider a move to the next likely piece of structure. It can really pay dividends to stay mobile and cover a bit of water, looking for action or concentrations of feeding fish. And that's exactly what's going through my mind at the moment. All right, I've stung those a little bit. There's another snag just out here I might try. It's the witching hour. This is the time you get them. A little bit calm, but that's all right. see the snag out here behind me. I'm going to slowly and quietly move around this submerged tree, probing it from various angles, trying to get my fly as close to the waterlogged timber as I can without snagging up on it. Yeah. Oh, come on, get off that snag. Off you come. <laughs> that was too close, too close for comfort. He's not a big fish, but he was right on that snag. Let's see if we can stay connected to one. No, oh, he's not a bad fish. Pulling the bow of the boat around. <laughs> whoa! Oh, come on! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, a little one. Jesse went hard. Ah, probably a good thing. He was a little one, taking it that close to the snag. fish. He'd be uh, oh, 32 or 33 to the tips probably. It's chunky. It's the perfect time of the day. I should be able to get another one out of there. Hopefully he hasn't spooked him. I pulled him away pretty quick. There we go. A little bit of surface action out here too. Normally I'd put him in the well so he doesn't scare the other ones on the snag, but I think we drifted far enough off it. Off you go, mate. Make sure everything's okay here. No nicks in the line. Straighten out the, the fly. It's really important that the, the legs and everything are straight. See if we can get another one. We've just about got enough light left. These change of light periods at dusk and dawn can be absolutely prime, especially in closed, non-tidal waters like this. Tides can be more critical in open systems, but lower light levels are still almost always a bonus. Brim are usually pretty spooky critters, but they're extra cautious in bright, clear conditions. Bulldozer his way back into the snag. Might be a better fish. Oh. Got him out in the open now. But 
there's other sticks down here as well. I'm only in 1.4 meters of water here. Oh, he's a good fish, this one. Yeah, he's a better fish. The sun's just about to disappear behind the tree line. And this is my absolute favorite time. Beautiful conditions out here this afternoon too. All right, grab my net. I'll see if we can get this float. Give it a look. It's not that much bigger. Just pulled a lot harder. A little bit bigger, but not much. And as you can see, they, they're a handful. I'm using a seven weight outfit with a six pound leader. And uh, I'm having to pull pretty hard on these fish. <laughs> Look at him in that afternoon sunlight. So pretty. Ah, fly fishing for brim. Frustrating, but so rewarding. He was just, just very lightly hooked, that one. Uh, we're pretty close to the snag, but I'm going to put him straight back in the water. See if we can get one more. Really important to be quiet when you're doing this stuff. Don't bang anything around in the boat, especially this time of the day. It's so um, quiet out here. They're going to pick up any any vibrations. All right. Get it right in on the snag. That fish took it well out, but he probably followed it out. Getting it down to weighted fly, floating line, about a uh, oh, three and a half to four meter leader. Don't need a super long leader in this shallow water. But I do like to get the fly down close to the bottom. All right, get right in there. This will be the one. As the sun sinks towards the horizon and the shadows lengthen, I reckon my chances of success are increasing exponentially. I'm also expecting to find Brim venturing further and further away from the shelter of their snaggy homes to feed at this time of day. Would have nearly put money on that one. Mm. He just followed it out, that's all. Mm. They're following it out about three, well, three or four metres, which is really good. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, this one's come right up on top, and it's a good fish. Swimming away from the snag now. <laughs> Gotta love that. <sighs> Done a complete circle around the boat. Oh, come on, stay on. Where are you going, mate? Out into the wide open spaces. Oh, I'm loving this seven weight now. Sounds a bit like overkill, but these are pretty big fish when they're close to that snag. Do you know, he's still not a giant. Mm. Let me do another circle, mate. Come up. Oh, he's 
still got some power. Yeah, he's a bit better. <laughs> They're slowly getting bigger every fish. Check that thing out. <laughs> that is one seriously good brim. Probably a bit backlit there. I might turn the camera around and get some light on him for you. There he is. Look at that. I'll run him over the tape in a minute, but um, maybe 44 to the tips, but what you've got to appreciate is the girth. Look at that. The thickness through a brim. That fish is about 1.4 kilos at least. Three pound on the old scale. And I'm probably being a little bit modest. Oh, the flies come out. <laughs> oh, I'm looking for the fly and it's dropped out. There it is, BWC shrimp, looking like it needs a bit of a comb and a makeover. It's looking a bit like Donald Trump at the moment. What a great little session. Dropped a couple, missed a couple, popped one off, got a couple of smaller ones and finished off with the sort of brim that brings me back out again and again doing this stuff. Absolutely love it. As it turns out, my length estimate on this one was just about spot on. A black brim this size could be 30 years old and capable of producing hundreds of thousands of eggs each year. For me, that makes them too good to keep. So I'm going to put her back in the hope that you might cross paths with her or one of her offspring one day, hopefully on a fly rod. Seriously, you've got to give brim on fly a go. It's too much fun. Oh, and by the way, if you'd like to see a lot more how-to stuff like this and join a bunch of like-minded anglers in a place where sharing is what it's all about, we'd love to have you in the inner circle of fishertopia.com. I reckon it'll be the best fishing club you've ever joined. Seriously, find out how by going to this link. Until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines.